the whole point of this course is not just to reduce stress and overwhelm and anxiety by increasing our capacity. And that's a huge thing, increasing our capacity. We're gonna talk a lot about that tonight. But it's really around this idea of clarity because there's so much going on and being able to be still in the face of the, the chaos. I expect that people will find a greater sense of balance, a greater sense of creativity, uh, focus, and peace of mind out of participating in it. And we're going to do that with some very basic, but also some advanced kinds of thinking, basic grounding, breathing, meditation, and movement techniques. But we'll take it deeper than that and see, well, what are the, what are the limiting beliefs of the inner critic of our identity and how can we use stress, anxiety, and overwhelm to actually transform those into being more spacious, emotionally, physically, and mentally spacious. So there are portals for expanding awareness, for creating more vitality, more resilience in our lives and in our relationships and in our community. One of the words that I love that from the work I did around physics was congruency. What we're looking for is alignment or congruency within ourselves and within our, our lives. There will be homework in the course. I promise you that if you do the homework, it will give you more time, not less. Home play. The home play, Mary Ellis says, the home play. Why is that? Well, Marielle and I every day do 60 to 90 minutes of meditation, but we've been doing it a while. I'm not asking you to do that. But what we find, and I think most people who have a meditation practice, this will give you, we'll start very short, very easy, and we'll build. So you don't have to be doing 90 minutes of meditation every day, but if you do do 20 minutes, you're going to find that you actually have more time, not less. And I'll talk about that at the end when we look at it. To get the most out of the course, I recommend keeping a journal, not just on the nights that you're here, but throughout the week. I think it's a very important thing because when you start to recognize the reoccurring beliefs, the reoccurring patterns in your life around stress, you'll find that there's a few, very, a very few actually, repeating patterns that are not that hard to change, but you need to know about them. So through the day, as you experience stress, we, we really want to, you to engage in writing down those things that you recognize. Uh, again, we'll ask you to do 10, uh, 10 to 20 minutes a day of, of meditation, and then in, these, in the half hour at the end, we're gonna ask you to really be coachable, to be open to hearing what's there. So again, write down any questions that you have. And one of the things, as I said in the very beginning, was to have a clear intention as you're starting the course, to really think, what is it that I want to get out of this course? So that's a, an important aspect. Let's just do a short, very short meditation. And the purpose of this is just to have a marker. And I invite you to inquire into, we're gonna just do a couple minute meditation. And I ask you to just inquire into, and I will as, I, as I, we're doing it, to what is your experience right now, your level of stress, and I'll go through the different areas that we want you to look at. So let's just take a second and take a couple deep breaths. Feel your feet on the floor. Just notice your breath as you straighten your spine. Maybe lift your head up a little from the back. And put your right hand in your left palm and just relax into your body for a minute. And just notice, you can ask your body actually, just notice if you were going to look on a scale of one to 10, 
What's the stress level in your body? Can you feel in your body? Is there any tension and tightness in the body? Just do kind of a short body scan as you breathe into your body, which will relax it, but just notice the level of tension or stress you're physically experiencing. Are you in your body? Hmm. And just make a note of a number from one to 10 in your physical body. And then just take a notice of your emotions. What emotions are present for you, if any? Can you notice them? Can you get a sense of what you're feeling here, being here in this, what it took to get to be here? Just notice any emotions. And again, on a scale of one to 10, you're just looking. And we'll go much deeper into these areas as we go on, but this is just a check-in. And then on a mental level, just, is there a lot of chatter going on? Is your mind quiet or still? Notice the voices in the head. The ones that say, what voices? And then we're assigning just a number from one to 10. Subjective sense of the level of stress that you're carrying, your mental, physical, and emotional stress. I'm just taking a couple deep breaths before we leave this. and wiggle your fingers and toes and let's just come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. So the first question I want to address in this uh, webinar is what is stress? we have this concept of stress and it really hides, it obfuscates what's actually going on. It's kind of like saying I'm sick. When you say I'm sick, you actually are an opening for disease to come because it'll be looking for a place to land. It's very different than naming the symptoms. I have a sore throat. I have, I have swollen lips, I have some kind of rash on my lips, you know, I have uh, cancer, whatever those things are, that's being specific. And it's the same thing with this word we call stress. I'm so stressed. How many people have heard, have you heard or have you heard yourself saying, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. And it's really hiding what's really going on because when we're saying we're stressed, we're saying something is too much. Something is too much. And in order to begin to work with the issue of stress, we want to know, well, what is it that's too much? You know, what, what is it? So stress from our definition of stress in this course is our personal and professional capacity. We're saying that our personal and professional capacity is inadequate to meet the level of challenges that arise from our commitments. So in other words, it's a lack of capacity. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, but some people can only get so much done in a little bit of time and so, much pe so many people get so much done in the same amount of time. You know, why is that? Why does that happen? So 
stress is really about capacity and capacity is about our, our too muchness, too much to do, too much information, too many emails, too much pain, too much suffering. I'm moving too fast. It's too complex. I have too many commitments. It's too complicated. So when we're talking about this issue, we have to begin to look at our capacity. What is it that's too much? And this is one of the things that you want to work with in the journal work, that to begin to look at, well, what's actually happening when I'm saying I'm anxious, I'm overwhelmed, I have too much stress? What is it that I feel in my body? What are the emotions that I'm experiencing? What are the thoughts that I'm having? And to just become more present. The reason we work a lot with mindfulness and meditation is to become more present so we can create a, a larger field, a larger capacity to be in the world and, um, and to begin to, to notice the repetitive actions that occur when we get stressed. How do I act when I'm feeling stressed? What's the, the repetitive uh, behavior. There's a great story that Suzuki Roshi used to tell. I uh, remember this from back, back in the 60s, actually. And there was this Zen master named Nanin, and he lived in the uh, Meiji area in the, um, at the turn of the 20th century, 1800s. And he was visited by this university professor who wanted to know about Zen. And the university professor comes and, of course, the Zen master, Japanese Zen master, invites him in and, and says, would you like some tea? And he says, oh, yeah, I'd, buy, I'd like, you know, some tea. And so he sits down and um, the Zen master, uh, uh, you know, he has the cup and the Zen master starts pouring the tea in the cup. And pretty soon the teacup's getting very close to the top and the professor is getting a little nervous about it and he's moving his cup over and pretty soon it's running over the side of the cup and then the saucer is filling up and and he says stop stop can't you see the cup is full and the zen master says yes yes how can i show you zen unless first you have an empty cup and so what we're looking for here is to create empty cups where we really can expand our capacity. And that's what's reducing stress is, is really about for us, that idea. So it's reducing, it's, it's, it's expanding our ability to deal with greater emotion, greater mental, greater physical capacity so that we can meet our commitments and to meet the challenges we have in our personal life and in our work life. So one of the ways you could look at this course is that we're going to be exploring our I-hood, our identity, our who we think we are that's behind the I am this, you know, who are you? Oh, I'm a teacher. Oh, who are you? I'm a student. Oh, who are you? I'm, I'm a housewife. I'm a mother. I'm all these ways that we have our identity, these, these identities that are formed come from the first five or six years of our life. And they're primarily given to us by our culture, by our familial uh, patterns, by our ancestral patterns. And one of the biggest things that um, uh, they're formed by is trauma. We all have early trauma. And it's, it's now we're dealing with cultural trauma. Cultural trauma comes from like slavery or genocide or these kinds of things. So we have a global culture of trauma right now. People are traumatized. We are traumatized. What is trauma? Trauma, another way for those of you who studied shamanism with me know that that's a form of soul loss happens from trauma. Trauma is something that happens when we have a, an event that happens that scares us, that hurts us in some way. And part of our essence then is pushed down and under. It is pushed away. 
So it results in these patterns of how we deal. Uh, men are scary. Women take advantage of you. Uh, women will hurt you. Uh, life is hard. Money is scarce. All of these things, many of them, most of them that are repetitive patterns start with some kind of trauma, which is totally appropriate for being a four-year-old and somebody yells at you and shutting down to protect your tender identity, your, ten, your inner tenderness, right? So these things are totally appropriate to suppress our joy, to suppress our ability to relate without being afraid to others. All of these things that happen in these first years of our life that formed our identity were totally appropriate. Now, at 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, they're not so appropriate. But they're patterns that are invisible to us. They are locked into our identity. So this is why we say that stress is an opportunity, an access, a portal for our development, for actually growing. So when we get stressed, if we can hold it, well, this is a really good thing. This is an opportunity for me to become more mindful so that we realize that our identity is not fixed. And it really is not fixed. I mean, it's so not fixed that the latest findings in science and epigenetics are showing that we can even change our genes. We're not our genes are not determining our life. It's at that very microscopic level that we find that we can create new neural pathways, that we can change our genes, that we can heal. But just basic patterns like we have around relationships or money or f different fear patterns, we can also do that. And stress is an access to that. And so we move from this fixed identity, which is why we do the meditation and the mindfulness work. We move from a fixed sense of I, a self-centric uh, view of the world. In other words, self-centric view of the world. I'm over here and the world is out there and that's really the world. We, but we know that other people see the world completely differently. So is that really the world out there? It's only a reflection of the identity and the beliefs that we have shaped through our developmental period. Some of them are ancestral and have been handed down. I think that one of the really fascinating things for me about this area is that when we heal these traumas, these early traumas that are locked in our bodies, our emotions, and our mental constructs, when we heal them, we also heal the ancestral patterns as well as the uh, future ancestors, the people who will come after us. I like calling them future ancestors because from a quantum perspective, the time is just a circular uh, pattern 